Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this precious time when we can study the Bible together. We pray for the Holy Spirit once again to become, to be our teacher, that we may learn from the deep and the spiritual things of God. We want to put our faith in you and to be able to understand how to know it and how to share it. That we know how to defend the faith but also to live in faith. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, <clears throat> question for you. What is the greatest problem that we all, all have? Okay. I guess you can say... Uh, what did you say? Sin? Fear? Fear of what? Unknown. What are the un what is the unknown? The biggest unknown. What is it? Bring it up. Bring it down. Really? Okay. So this microphone is not that good, huh? Maybe it's, it's maybe uh, made in China. Um, so, fear, unknown, um, sin. Uh, why is it that sin, what's the, what is the biggest problem with sin? I know sin itself is a problem. But what, deceitfulness, what else? Huh? Pride. Someone says, death. Okay. Now, I want to suggest... Why are you guys standing there? <laughs> We're just trying to see if we can adjust the sound. Oh, really? Yeah. Am I... Don't worry. You okay, 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 okay. Okay, I want to suggest that the biggest problem, okay, you may say sin, you may say fear, you may say something else, but it all boils down to death. That is the, most likely, the biggest felt problem that we all share. Christians, non-Christians, um, atheists even, that they may have some answers for their after they, 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 they die, but it's all, it's all theory. But still, the existence of this fear of death, the existence of the fear of death, it is, it is the reality of all mankind. What do you think? And the Bible says... Dead know not anything, but living, they know at least one thing. That they want to die. What a life. <laughs> what a life. Okay. But, but, the good news is, okay, watch this. The problem is death. Therefore, the good news has to be what? Life. What kind of life? Eternal life. But when do you literally begin your eternal life? Depends if you're 144,000. You know what? 
You guys are too complicated. <laughs> Resurrection. Resurrection. Literally speaking, yes, you may have the promise, assurance of eternal life today, but the reality of eternal life begins when we receive immortality. Yes? Most of us when we are resurrected. So resurrection is a is a good news, yes or no? Yes. Okay, now. So again, the problem is death, right? And really, ultimate solution has to be the opposite. Life. Life, okay. But in order to go from death to life, there's got to be what? <laughs> Before we go there. Just, just think. You're going to die. And most people already died already. So, if there's a solution for them and for us, there's got to be resurrection, right? Okay. All right. Because there is resurrection... Listen carefully, because there's resurrection. Um, death is considered, I know this can be debatable, because there is the promise of resurrection, death is considered as sleep. I know, I know, if Jesus, if he did not step in between Adam and God, so to speak, we are going to what? Die. Die. And yes, we can say we will sleep eternally. Yeah? Is it logical? So even then we can still describe death as sleeping but eternal okay but we can also look at it this way because Jesus stepped in our death is not final right therefore our when we die it's like we are sleeping why? Because if you're sleeping, you can be what? Woken up. Right? So, we, our church, we have a doctrine called State of the Dead, right? And that doctrine really helps us to understand resurrection. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Question. How many how many shall be resurrected? <laughs> and then the church is divided. <laughs> Eating their broccolis and carrot, but they're fighting. <laughs> First Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse twenty-two. First Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse twenty-two. The Bible says, "For as in Adam, how many died? All, All die. Because of Adam, everyone shall die." Now. 
Even so, in Christ, shall what? All be made alive. When the Bible says all, is that talking about all, yes or no? Yes. No? Yes. Shh. Go ahead. In Christ. Okay, now, do you see the word even as? Even so? Yeah? That's comparing, right? So, in Adam, only certain people die or all died? Even as, even so, in Christ, all be made alive. So, you can say, it's not wrong. I know what you're talking about. I understand. You're putting a little condition. But, this text, there's no condition. All will die because of Adam, but all will be made alive because of Jesus. And that is correct. Because all will be resurrected because of Jesus. But now the question is, how many types of resurrections do we have? Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> look, look. You're thinking of special resurrection, right? I know, I know. It's like, oh, I read the spirit of prophecy. I read. Hold your horses. But basically, turn your Bibles with me to book of John. Book of John. <laughs> book of John, chapter 5. Let the Bible speak. John chapter 5. And uh, look with me. Verse 29. So, is it clear that everyone shall be resurrected? Yes. Generally, I mean... I don't want to go into the micro details of resurrection, but let's just just keep it as a big picture, okay? Anyhow, if you read the Spirit of Prophecy, then you should know what I'm talking about. But, according to the Bible, verse 29, And shall come forth they that have done, good unto the resurrection of life. life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. damnation. There you go. So all will be resurrected. But guess what? You know, when I say all will be resurrected, I'm, just, I'm sure some people, going to, some people are going to say, oh, that's great. <laughs> but there are two types of resurrections. <laughs> there are two types. Resurrection of life and resurrection of damnation. damnation. Wow. Or condemnation. You see that? Okay. So, by the way, can't you see that the promise of resurrection, even resurrecting the wicked, that is possible because Jesus died? Are you with me? Because none deserves to be resurrected. Not even the wicked ones. You understand? Alright then. So, we have established the biggest problem that everyone has is death. <laughs> and God's ultimate solution for our problem is life. How to get there? Resurrection. Resurrection. Literally speaking. Okay? Of course, it's all through Christ. Resurrection. But we realize that there are two types of resurrections. Now the question is, how do we, how do we become a part of the resurrection of life? Okay, there is accepting Christ, baptism, 
let the word of God abiding in you. That's the practical aspect, right? But now, here's my question. Here's my question. Listen. Is there... Okay, now. According to John chapter 5, verse 29, what in the Bible text, what condition is given for the resurrection of life and resurrection of damnation? Don good or evil all right then we stay with the bible text so done so so good and evil whoever you are that will determine what type of resurrection yes or no okay so now the question is when does god or jesus when do they determine you, that you have done good or evil? It gotta be. It's gotta be before the second coming. Yes, yes. It's, it has to be before the first res, uh, first resurrection, right? Yes. So, in order for God to determine whether you have done good or evil, that aspect has to be done before He comes back, right? Yes. So, is there a word? That describes when somebody examines to see whether you have done good or evil. Investigation. 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 Judgment. judgment. So that, this is the reason why we have investigative judgment. You understand? So, if we put this in the time, uh, timeline, from 1844... Until the close of probation. Everyone will be reviewed, in a sense. I know some, there's, some, there's some minor details. I understand that. If you don't understand, it's okay. Just let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but in a sense, everyone will be reviewed. To determine who will be part of re- the first resurrection and who will be part of the second resurrection. Are you together with me? Is that clear? Okay. So that's the reason why we have investigative judgment. Yes? But now, IJ, okay, now, again we talked about it before. Now all this somehow is all connected to first angel's message. If you don't understand this background, you only know details. You don't know the whole picture. You got to see the big picture. Okay? Now, what is the final conclusion of investigative judgment? When somebody has done good, what's the announcement? He that, he that is just, let him be just still. Meaning, he that is living in a just life, he is now considered justified. In fact, if you look up the Greek word, he that is just, Greek word, let him be just still, Greek word, is not the same. It's not the same. One is more for living the quality of just life. And the other one is, to declare him to be just. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah, look it up. So, so look at this. <laughs> look at this. We receive unchangeable justification at the end of the investigative judgment. Yes or no? It has to be at the end of judgment. Even today, in a court setting, when does a judge make the verdict? In the beginning? Oh, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Let's change that. What happens? At the end of investigation, right? Okay, now, here's a crucial point. Listen. 
when because we because Jesus announces who who is justified and who is not we can assume those who are justified will be part of the first resurrection yes or no yes. so justification is a prerequisite for first resurrection Justification is prerequisite for immortality. Are we together? And what is justification? Declaring that you have not sinned. If justification, if, and that's a big if, if justification is only forgiveness, is that enough? To receive immortality. No. Please tell me why. Why? <coughs> why why do we need cleansing? Why do we need why do we need that? Isn't it forgiveness same as cleansing? No. You sure when you say no, you know what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> or are you just thinking that thinking that that's the good answer for the teacher? Can, listen, literally speaking, literally, just think very logically, can sinners go to heaven? No. Can forgiven sinners go to heaven? No. You see, that's, this is where we are confused. You have to, um, in a judicial way, do you understand? In a judicial way, can, can a judge declare somebody totally innocent no. when that person is forgiven no. I mean does he say oh I forgive you oh by the way you have not done anything wrong no. if I have not done anything wrong why do you forgive me yeah. do you understand the, the opposite if you say I'm, you're, I'm forg- if, if you say I'm forgiven meaning you acknowledge that I have done something wrong that's entirely different than I justify you. Meaning, I have vindicated that you have not done anything wrong. Gospel, okay, two things happening at one time. Forgiving your sin at the same time, declaring you as though you have not done anything wrong in the past. Restitution, yeah. Do you understand? That's, that is pretty powerful, I think. God will treat you as though you never sinned. Think about that. But now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that possible today? Um, no, 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 no. I'm talking about in a, um, in a judicial way. Is that possible? Okay, 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 okay. Now, so then, what does God need to do? What does He need to do in order to declare us just? To cover? What does it mean? Cleanse. To remove. Now, when a judge, at the end of investigation, when, a ju- when he's about to say, Bam! You are innocent. He can say that because because what? No evidence. Are you with me? Can he say you are just when there is an evidence? I mean, there is a body with a knife in the heart. And there's a deep, clear fingerprints all over. Can you say, well, you're innocent. (laughs) Can you do that? He cannot. So, he can only declare you, listen, just if there is no evidence. All right, then. Do we have evidence that we have sinned? Yeah, plenty, right? (laughs) 
So, so how is God? So what is God going to do? Huh? Get rid of it. Okay. Yes, Christ transferred it and covered with his blood that's covering, but it will be more than that. When you cover something, yes, it's covered, yes, but it's still there. But he will do much more than that. He will then remove it. Remember this, remember this. Blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, it can take your sin, take the sin away from you, forgive your sin, and then the blood of Jesus can wipe them out. You understand? In the Bible, we call this, listen, this one word makes us unique. Blotting out. Blotting. Blotting. What did I say? Two words. It's a phrase. Blotting out. Let me show you some Bible text. I want to show you that the promise of God, listen, the promise of God, the new covenant, has blotting out of our sin concept. Turn your Bibles now to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. When you speak to the to other denominations, you know, uh, or other Christians, do they love this phrase, the new covenant? And do they, do they love the phrase or the concept of blood covenant, the blood of Jesus? They love it, right? And when they and when they say that, you should say, "Praise God." Okay, praise God for the new covenant. Uh, and, and, but they usually use that f- phrase, "new covenant," with the idea of we don't have to keep God, you know, God's Sabbath or, or keep the law of God. Well, let's see what the new covenant says in Hebrews ten and verse sixteen. Are you there? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will what? Put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I what? Write them. Uh, the Bible says he will put his law where? Hearts. Write them where? Now, where's your heart? Where's your heart? When the Bible says heart, where, where is that at? Okay, where's your mind? Hang on, wait, wait, same location. (laughs) Why not just say, I will put and write in your brain. Save some space in the Bible. Why two different uh, expressions? Heart is more emotional, more spiritual. Mind is more intellectual. So God is saying, I will put my law into you, both intellectually and spiritually. Okay. Now, and the Bible says, I will write them. That's an interesting language, isn't it? I will write them. Question for you. When and why do you write things down? Ah, so what is God saying? When the Bible says, I will write them. I will help you to what? Remember. Remember. So what's the new covenant so far? 
I will help you to remember my law both intellectually and spiritually. Well, let me ask something. In the Ten Commandments, do we already have the word remember? Yes. Remember the? Do you see the concept? Do you see the concept of remembering and new covenant connected? It's like, what is new covenant? We can almost say remember. But in Ten Commandments, we already have remember. But that is connected to Sabbath. Therefore, Sabbath is is a sign of new covenant which is older than the Old Covenant. So when you are experiencing the New Covenant, if you're really experiencing the New Covenant, Sabbath should not be a problem to you. You understand? Okay, now watch this. Then, look at verse 17. Do you see the... What is the first word in verse 17? And. Conjunction, right? Right? And their what? Sins and iniquities will I remember no more. So tell me, what is the new covenant? If you help me to... If you allow me to help you to remember my law in exchange, I will not remember your sin. Is that good? Okay, question. Yeah, serious. The new covenant is, if you allow me, no force here, okay? If you allow me to help you to remember my law, meaning you have to open your heart, be willing, surrender. Are you with me? Then I promise you that I will not remember your sin. That's the new covenant. Okay? So then, question. Can God forget? Does he ever say, hey, have you seen Gabriel? Where is he? (laughs) Can God forget? Naturally? No. But can he choose to forget? Is he joking around? When he says, I will not remember, that means he will not remember. Don't you get it, my friends? You see, sin um, exists in many places. It's, I'm not talking about, you know, sin as a always sinful, but the memory of sin exists in many places. Um, first, our, you know, our body is a result, the way, the way we look today, no matter how beautiful you're trying to look, our body is a result of sin. But this will be gone when God gives us new body. Right? And we see sin... The result of sin in this earth, right? But that will be gone when God gives us new earth and new heaven. Are you with me? And our uh, uh, the the record of our sin exists in the heavenly books. Yes, but that will be gone when He erases them. Okay, and and Satan, the originator of sin, he will be removed. You understand? So the power of sin, the record of sin, the evidence of sin will be all gone. But the final, the final cleansing, if you want to put it that way, when God removes the memory of sin, so to speak, from His mind, the only thing that's going to remind us that we were redeemed from sin, the handprints of Jesus. 
only memory of sin is connected to solution. Yeah, the M. The, yeah, he will. That's the mystery, but we can. I can definitely see God still having that. I miss them feeling, and it will stay with them forever, as far as I know. That's how I understand. But in terms of, for us, we can have the confidence that God will not eternally, continually remembering our sin. Do you understand? I mean, how comfortable do you feel if someone says, I forgive you, you're my friend. I will not forget, okay? (laughs) Would you feel so comfortable? No, 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 no. No. So, so then the question is, when can God not remember our sins? What does he have to do in order for him not to remember our sin? Let's see what the Bible has to say. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Isaiah 43. Are you there? And uh, verse 25. You there? I, even I, am he that what? Bloodeth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not what? So tell me from the Bible... When can God say, I will not remember your sin? I mean, He can say that any time. But when, he, when can He really actually carry that out? When He blots out, out our transgressions. transgressions, our sin and iniquities. Yes? Therefore, my friends, blotting out, listen, is part of the new covenant. Yes or no? Are we together so far? Blotting out sin is, is a part, on the major part, in a new covenant experience. So if, if, if I allow God to help me to remember His law, His will, someday He is going to blot out my sins. And then He will not going to remember my sin. But then, what else can He declare when He blots our sins? Just read the text in verse 26. Are you there? Put me in what? Remembrance. Let us what? Plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be what? There you go. So bloody out sin is connected to justification so when our sins are blotted out then our justification is sealed until then what do we have today can we be justified today it is a tricky question Can I say I have eternal life today? I mean, can I say that? (laughs) Can you say it by faith? Ah. Okay, you can say it by faith, right? But when you receive immortality, do you have to say it by faith? It would be a dumb thing, huh? To say it by faith. 
You understand? Can I say I have justification today? Yes, by faith. By faith. I can say that today. But I hold on to the faith until the reality comes. Do you understand? Do you understand? So I have justification by faith today. Are you with me? What about salvation? By faith, I'm saved. But true salvation comes when? When Jesus comes back. Remember, in Isaiah 25, this is our God. We have waited for Him. This is our salvation. Remember, book of Luke, redemption draweth nigh at the second coming of Jesus. Okay, now, why is this all important? Listen. <clears throat> when you are trying to teach somebody first of all blotting out sin is that an important doctrine? Yes. Okay. when you are trying to teach somebody about the blotting out sin you, there is no way to explain that unless you explain the sanctuary message yes or no? So, state of dead helps us to understand resurrection power. Sanctuary message helps us to understand investigative judgment. Blotting out sin. Are you with me? Uh, One more quick point. What is the ultimate act of God's mercy for us? The ultimate act of God's mercy for us. Look with me, Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews. Uh, When we talk about mercy of God, by His mercy we breathe and we can live today. Amen. We have probation today. Okay. By the mercies of God we can receive wisdom and knowledge of God. Yes or no? Okay. By His mercy, we are led to repentance. Yes or no? By His mercy, we receive forgiveness of sin today. Okay. By His mercy, we can overcome sin. Yes? Okay. By His mercy, what's the ultimate reason, the, the result? Look, Hebrews chapter 8. Look with me. Verse 12. For I will be what? Merciful. merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I what? Remember no more. So what does that mean? The ultimate mercy of God is what? Forgetting your sin. Blotting out. Check this one out. Do you remember uh, David? Psalm 51. Go to Psalm 51. See me after the meeting. <laughs> That's a good question. Psalms 51. Psalms 51. Verse 1. Psalms 51, verse 1. The Bible says, Have what? Mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the Multitude of thy tender mercies. Next word, please. Uh, what was uh, David asking? Was he asking just the forgiveness? It was more than that. What was it? Blot them out. So he was really asking what? Justification. Question for you. <clears throat> Question. In the most holy place, what was the most important Furniture. There's only one. 
The Ark of Covenant? Ark of Covenant, yes, but there's something. Golden censer, yes, is the mercy seat. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans. Book of Romans. <clears throat> so, when you think about sanctuary, the focus, of course, the blood of Jesus, but the blood of Jesus needs to go into the most holy place. And in the most holy place, the blood of Jesus is applied where? On the mercy seat. That mercy. What mercy is it? To blot out your sin. Let me show you something very interesting. Romans chapter 3. Before that, Romans. Psalms 51. Romans chapter 3. And verse... Twenty-four. But let's read from verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being what? Justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be what? Propitiation. If you look up the word propitiation, listen, it also means mercy seat. So justification is connected to propitiation, and propitiation is connected to mercy seat. So then, look at here. What's the focal point? The focal point is, who can have life? Righteous. But who are righteous? Those are justified. Are you with me? Who are justified? Those. Are you with me? But in order for the in order for your sins to be blotted out. In order to understand this concept, you have to understand sanctuary. And this is connected to investigative judgment. That's it. So, in order to be righteous or righteousness, in order to experience righteousness, we can obtain it by by faith. Now, do you understand why we have state of death? Do you understand why we have sanctuary? The goal is to help us understand righteousness by faith. Now, in order to explain faith, guess what doctrine we have? Sabbath. Why? Why Sabbath? Hmm? Sign between Israel and God. Now let's think <coughs> very, in a logical way. Um, do we have any proof for Sabbath keeping? I mean, yes we do from the Bible, but why is it on the seventh day? Well, there's a connection there, but in what way? Okay, now before we think, think about Sabbath, let's think about faith. What is faith? To believe something that you cannot see, you cannot prove, right? You believe it because just simply God said it. Are you with me? 
Because God said it. Now, for example, the tree of good and evil. Was there, an ev- was there any um, evidence by itself that says, you should not eat that? No. Now, if, you ha- if I give you a piece of paper, I give you a piece of paper, okay? And I say, draw the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. How would you draw it? Would you use like a black marker? A very thorny? Yeah? Um, uh, like a, a blood-like thing is woozing out? Huh? How would you draw the tree of uh, knowledge and good and evil? How would you draw it? It looks as good as other trees. If it looks scary and ugly, <laughs> Eve will be like, are you kidding? <laughs> She'll be like, do you think I'm that dumb? <coughs> right? The tree itself, as far as I can see, it did not look scary or evil or, or ugly. It is very possible that perhaps that tree looked the best. It smelled good. It looked good. So based upon visual evidence, there was no scientific proof that the tree was bad. And it's going to kill you. In fact, when serpent was crunching the fruit so to speak it seems as though there was more evidence more visual audible evidence that the tree was good why do you think I can talk to you uh, tree (laughs) you know I didn't talk to you yesterday (laughs) but today I'm talking to you if this tree can help me this much, can you imagine what this can do for you? Ah. And she got a little uh, tripped up by what she said. She says, I know what God said. Uh, God says, you should not eat it nor touch it unless you die. I know what God said. You know, God never said, if you touch it, you will die. And God did not say, if you touch it, you will die. He never said that. Of course, you should not touch it. You understand? Maybe God said, don't touch it, meaning, don't get near. But God never said, if you touch it, you will die. You know what Ellen White says? In that little book, Confrontation? It says, says, the serpent plucked the fruit. What does that mean? It's like, Eve, do you see me dying? And then he dropped the fruit. When something is being dropped in front of you, what's your natural reaction? (laughs) So she caught it. At that moment, watch this. She saw the tree look good. She heard the voice of the serpent who ate the fruit. But now she's touching it. At that moment, the serpent said, You shall not surely die. You see, you're touching it. Do you feel any death within you? So watch this. All the scientific evidences are telling her it's okay, right? So at that moment, listen, at that moment, only thing that she had, if she wants to live by faith, that was the moment. At that moment, the only thing that she had was what? The word of God. God, What? Don't eat. God said, don't eat. She had no scientific proof. You see, my friends, look, look, think about it, think about it. One day, you can prove it scientifically. It's 24 hours, the the rotation of the earth, right? You can prove uh, one month, the moon going around the earth. You can prove one year. Right? Earth going around the sun. But what about one week? (laughs) Just the Bible, isn't it? And why is it Sabbath is on the seventh day? 
Why can God create, you know, do everything on six days and says, hmm, I'll just choose one of the six? Why the Sabbath day is the seventh day? Why? We have no scientific, there may be, but as far as I know, there is no scientific evidence. All that we have, that is totally God's own right. When we exercise trust, our trust, listen, is this. I don't have to fully understand as long as I know God said it. I trust in what God said. Are you with me? So, when you keep Sabbath, what are you doing? You are exercising faith that is not totally based upon scientific proof. Is totally based upon what God said. You understand? You so Sabbath teaches you how to have, how to what? Exactly. Sanctuary teaches you how to obtain righteousness. So that is the reason why you understand why we have Sabbath. There are other reasons. There are other reasons. But that is the reason why we have Sabbath. That's why Hebrews chapter 4, it says, He that enter into his rest has ceased from his own works. Have you read that before? So now, look at this. State of the dead. Sanctuary. Sabbath. Righteousness by faith. And then, all this leading up to second coming. <coughs> Look, these are the f- these are the major pillars of our faith. All leading up to obtaining life. Do you understand? I got you. (laughs) Do you understand? Do you see the big picture now? So watch this. Fear God. Give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth. So what's the conclusion? This is the only way you can have righteousness by faith. That's how you prove righteousness by faith from first angel's message. And that's the reason why we have 2300 days to prove sanctuary in 1844. To prove the existence of our movement. Do you understand? Is the picture getting bigger now? Do you see the, the, the conclusion? Yeah. Would you mind just going over that last bit about when you went, when you summarized the previous message and you said you were like that on the board? Okay. Now, the fear God, remember? Fear God and give glory to Him. That's how we should live, right? We should live. But we should fear God and give glory to Him by faith. But when we worship the Creator, that teaches us how we need to live by faith. Because worship, worshiping the Creator is connected to Sabbath. And that is so important. Why? Because the hour of His judgment has come. Investigate judgment. And through, and through this judgment, we can obtain righteousness. But righteousness is only available to those who are exercising their faith. And their faith will be manifested if they fear God and give glory to Him, especially in the time when they are being pressured to fear men and to worship the beast. 
You understand? In other words, do you still fear God and, 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 and worship Him when you're being pressured to worship the beast and we see the mark of the beast with a death threat? Remember, the big question between uh, the big question about Job. He, Job is only fearing God because you're blessing him. Right? If you take away the blessings, he will curse to your face. Remember that? So God says, okay, I will let you bring forth crisis upon his life to test, to show that he does fear me from the bottom of his heart. So last day crisis is really testing our faith. And those who pass the test, they obtain righteousness, not by works, but because their faith has evidence that they fear God and give glory to Him. You understand? Is that beautiful? Yes. Do you see it now? now? Do you see why we are Seventh-day Adventists? You see it? Yes. Yeah. You know, I heard that too. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. So there is some scientific proof. But I just want to say, that Sabbath, you know, it's not the same between you and me. You're earlier than me. So again, um, again, I'm going back to what I heard this morning. Yeah. If you want to disapprove it, you can. Yeah. So when you just, in other words... At the bottom, the only solid reason that we keep Seventh-day Sabbath is not because our body somehow rests more on Sabbath, Seventh-day Sabbath, but because of what God said. Yes. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Even, uh, I think Germans or French, they tried to have 10-day cycles, but it never worked. Never worked. But do you see the big picture here? All right. Now, do you understand First Angel's message? You think you know? We didn't even cover 5% of First Angel's message. That was the, uh, the, the basic, the, 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 the foundation. But we have to go even deeper. And we only have one more session on Sunday. But let's pray. I think my time is up. Let's pray together. Let's all stand for prayer, shall we? <laughs> Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this wonderful, wonderful time that we have to study your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to establish the absolute truth in our hearts in our minds that that we may understand the truth both spiritually and intellectually that we cannot be moved S seal us with your love and may our faith embrace and grasp the promises of God that we will not fear men, but only fear God. So teach us how to fear God today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.